Hi folks, Daryl Legacy here, Instructional Designer at Hack. This video will show you how to make screencast videos using Camtasia. We'll talk about a course navigation video as our example, but you can also use Camtasia to record a PowerPoint lecture, assignment instructions, or anything else you might want to show to your students. Online and blended courses require a course navigation video to help your students understand where important materials are in your course. It isn't required for in-person courses, but those students can also benefit from this kind of video. Screencast-O-Matic is the other popular option for recording videos, and we'll cover that in a different video. We're going to discuss Camtasia here, which has a bit of a steeper learning curve but lets you do much more. If you don't have Camtasia on your computer yet, that's the first step. If you want it installed on a Hack-owned computer, you'll need to email tech support at supportcenter at hack.edu. If you want it on your personal computer, you'll need to sign into MyHack and then click on Documentation and Tutorials and then Camtasia 2020 for home use instructions. Once you have it installed and open, choose New Project. If you haven't already, you need to click the Sign In button in the upper right. You should be able to sign in with your hack email and password, though you may need to choose Sign In with Google first. TechSmith, the company that creates Camtasia, has many helpful tutorial videos, which we'll link in the description below. So this video will just give a brief overview to get you started. The left panel has tools for adding audio, video, images, and effects. The middle window shows what the video will look like, but it starts off blank until you add video or images. The bottom area allows you to place, move, and mix different media and effects on different tracks. We'll look at that in a minute. If you want to use a script, it's usually best to record that before the video. To do so, click on the Voice Narration button on the left. You can paste or type your script into the window there, and make sure the correct input is selected at the top. The slider changes the input volume from your microphone, and it's usually better to have it record at or near the maximum. You and viewers can more easily decrease the volume than increase it. When you're ready to record your audio, click Start Voice Recording, and you'll notice the line on track 1 moving to the right. If you make a mistake, you can click Cancel to delete or start over. When you're done, click the Stop button, and it will ask where to save the file. After you save it, you'll notice the file is now on track 1 on the bottom. If you left silence at the beginning or end, we can easily clip that from the file, so don't worry about that too much. To record video, you need to click the red Record button in the top left. This opens the recorder and also draws a dotted green frame around your screen. It's probably defaulting to the entire screen, so if you want to change it, click and drag the sides or corners until it is only recording the area you want. You'll probably see that the frame stays proportional as you enlarge or reduce it. If you don't want it to keep those same proportions, you'll need to click the little padlock icon under the Recording Area section of the recorder so that it looks unlocked. Then you can drag parts of the frame without it staying locked to the original resolution. By default, the screen recording is on, which is the leftmost option in the recorder. You can change that to off if you want just your webcam recording or if you want just audio. The camera is off by default, but you can turn that on instead of or in addition to the screen recording. Screen recording only is a good option if you're narrating a PowerPoint or showing notes or how to do an assignment or procedure. Webcam recording only is good if you want to just talk directly to your students, and it's also a good option for a short introduction video where you just talk about yourself a bit. Having both on is helpful if you want students to see what it is on your screen, but also your face. That can help them connect with you a bit more, and it also helps your passion and excitement come through when talking about specific points. The microphone is usually on by default, which is what you want unless you have already recorded your audio with a script like in the previous step. In that case, you want the microphone off so that it isn't recording your breathing, your typing, or your mouse clicks. The system audio records sounds from your computer itself, so you only want this on if you're going to be playing music or a video with sound. Otherwise, turn it off so you aren't recording system alerts or incoming email sounds. You can also make these choices in the Record drop-down menu. When your settings are correct and you're ready to record, push the red Record button. It will count down and then start recording. 
Once it's recording, it will record everything that you see on your screen that's inside the green recording frame. F10 is the key to stop recording, so make sure to remember it so you can stop when you're finished. Or you can switch to the small recorder, which is a red C on your taskbar in Windows. That will let you stop or pause if you need to. If you're going to use a script to record your audio separately, you'll want to start recording your video and then come back to Camtasia and push the play button so that you'll hear the audio and can match up your mouse and keyboard movements to the audio elements. Let's look at a sample course and talk about your course navigation video. A course navigation video serves two real purposes, to help students find your course materials and to make the students feel supported from the very beginning. To ensure you're showing a view that is most similar to what they will see, you should click your name or photo in D2L and choose View as Student before pressing Record. It's up to you how formal or informal you want this to be, but it should be welcoming and some of your personality should come through. You may even want to turn on both screen and webcam recording so students can see both your screen and your face. Think about what elements they need to know about from the first day of class. You probably should explain the news tool and your instructor contact widget, and you should give an overview of the Start Here folder. It might be a good idea to upload your navigation video both to Start Here and to a welcome news item, because students may not even know they should go to the content area to find this video. You should show them where the syllabus is and the support links for user support, student services, tutoring, and D2L accessibility. It's a good idea to show what a typical module looks like, probably week one. Just give a quick overview of how the module's arranged. You also should probably click through important links on your navbar, which might include quizzes, Dropbox, discussions, or grades. Make sure you've discussed how to find your contact information in any class or office hour Zoom links, and feel free to share any other tips or tricks you have for them. Try to be brief since you don't want to overwhelm students with a 45-minute video on their first day. If you need to go into depth on something like the syllabus or other specific expectations, try making separate short videos for those. When you push F10 to end your video, it should automatically place it in the media bin area or directly on one of the tracks on the timeline at the bottom of your Camtasia window. If you have a version before Camtasia 2020, it may ask you where to save it instead. If that happens, you'll need to click the media tool on the left and then click the small plus button on the bottom. Choose import media and then find the video file you just saved. This will place it in the media bin area and you'll then need to click and drag it down onto the timeline. There are many advanced options to use in Camtasia, which we'll cover in a later video. The only advanced tip we'll cover here is how to clip off parts in the beginning or end of your audio or video file. Let's say you have silence in your audio, or if you used a script and want to get rid of the beginning of the video, showing you coming to Camtasia to start the audio playing. You can easily delete those by hovering over the left or right side of your audio or video file until the double arrows appear, and then clicking and dragging inward. You can also do this for elements in the middle of your files, but we'll cover that in a more advanced tutorial later. As you're working, don't forget to save occasionally by clicking Ctrl S or going up to File and Save. Camtasia does have an autosave function, but it's safer to do it yourself. When you're completely finished with your project, click the Share button in the upper right and choose Local File. You can just keep clicking Next to stick with the default options until you get to the Produce Video screen. Here you should give your project a name and then choose where to save it. If you're working from home and using the VPN, I would suggest saving to your computer's Downloads folder rather than your Hack Drive, Google Drive, or any other folder on your computer. That's because the Downloads folder is one of the only places that doesn't auto-sync with hack servers through the VPN, and it will result in the fastest converting time. It'll then show a progress bar as it converts your video to an MP4 file. The time it takes depends on many factors, including how long the project is, how many different media elements you have, how fast your computer is, and where you save the file. When it's finished, it will open a preview in your web browser for you to view. If you're happy with it, you can then find the file wherever you saved it and upload to YouTube to share with your students. Camtasia does have an option to upload automatically to YouTube, but that doesn't always work correctly in trying to connect to your YouTube account, and that also won't give you a copy of the file in case you need to use it again. That's all you need to know for recording with Camtasia 2020. If you have any questions, please contact me or someone else in the CDI team.